Welcome to Basra. Welcome to Basra. Ahlan wa sahlan bikum fi al-Basra. It's good. It's awesome. School bell. Hold up. Wassalama. Habibi. Welcome. Thank you. I'm now real Iraqi man. Welcome, Habibi. Welcome. This is the people from Basra. There are so many times. Good morning and welcome to Basra. Iraq, the city of the south, the financial capital of the country, is actually our last day with our friends from Al Rafradain. And from the marshes, we took a two hour drive further south and arrived late last night. And what a way to start! We've headed to the old part of the city, and we are currently having breakfast in an old house slash museum. Look at this place. Welcome to Iraq. Basra is actually the city that everybody told us Literally to come everyone to. Literally said, come So to Basra. many messages. So we were super excited to explore and can't wait to do it today. But um, these houses date back to the 16th and 17th century. And inside they have loads of like trinkets, memorabilia from around the city and all sorts of things. I mean, I'll give you a full tour of what this museum looks like. Um, they recently opened it into a restaurant a couple of months ago, which is really good for us because I am starving. I'm literally going to be sad having breakfast next to a stuffed taxidermy deer with a necklace on. So weird. Look at this, we have a huge spread for an Iraqi breakfast which I am looking forward to. This is maklama which is basically like eggs, tomato and you can also have it with um, beef and potato and then obviously we have our traditional Bread. I think we eat this like 10 times a day, don't we? It's like a breakfast, lunch, <laughs> dinner, dessert. All the time. Um, let me just... Throw right. that around. I have no idea how you're meant to eat this. It's quite early It's because in the you always get this type of bread with eggs when you expect sort of toast. Yeah, you think like toast and butter, but you have this instead, so... Like a roti. Mm. Oh, that was really good. It's essentially just an Iraqi omelette that comes in a little clay pot. We are pretty excited to be part of Manta Sleep's Nip for a Nap campaign. Travelling full time really is exhausting and it can be difficult to get a good night's sleep. This is where napping is super, super important. Did you know naps can actually deliver a number of benefits such as reducing tiredness during the day? A short daytime nap can actually boost your workplace performance and improve things such as your memory and the ability to complete complex tasks. Manta Sleep makes the world's best sleep masks, focusing on giving you energy to create your best life. We have been able to try out two of their masks. The first one is the Manta Sleep Mask Pro. This has 100% blackout, gives you a super deep sleep and absolutely zero pressure on your eyelids or your lashes. Perfect for those of us who wear makeup. This is just to prove to you that these are actually completely blackout and I cannot see a thing. Um, they're so comfy. It looks so cool. We also had the Manta Slim head strap mask and you can also change your eye cups which I really really like as well. Really sleek, has a barely there feel, almost naked. Um, <laughs> again 100% blackout effective. Personally I just love the fact that I can put this on, not worry about my makeup or my fringe um, and can basically just grab a little nap wherever I am, plane, train, bus, car, wherever. Manta Sleep have actually given us a 10% code for you so click the link in the description to get 10% off your sleep masks and go and nip for a nap. This it is a real feast, and Z, you've got kuba, kuba, yeah, which is like a pastry with beef. Yep, see beef inside. It looks good. Is it good? Yes, very good. This is actually Z's very good. second breakfast. Iraqis got famous from kuba. It's your second breakfast. Yes. <laughs> Saha. Saha. That's after breakfast, it's the live. I like Maclemma. It was very, very good. But this is the museum. I can't show you everything because there's a lot of people having their breakfast everywhere. This is just as you walk in, you have all sorts of traditional pots and trinkets and coffee pots. And Apparently um, he's collected it from all different markets, all different old houses and made 
this museum. It's, it's a a really mishmash. cool. It's a bit of a mishmash, but it is so so unique. He actually also told us that up here you have an old school bell. Hard up. <laughs> I love that. It's so loud. <laughs> No, it's disturbing everyone when they have their breakfast and also they have an old did he say that was a church piano i think so from the 18th century an 18th century piano there's also like an old film cinema video i'm not going to play the piano otherwise i will not be allowed back um but i just think the the concept of this is really cool and opening up the restaurant only a couple of months ago was a brilliant idea they even have this old cinema video player type thing and this is the 18th century piano i'll leave that that was not a bad way to start our day in Basra, a museum, a 17th century building. Salam, how are you my friends? Everyone in Basra is so friendly. A 17th century old house and a spot that you could eat, which came to only 18,000 dinar, which was just over $10, which I think is very, very reasonable. But this is old Basra. It's currently being redeveloped by UNESCO. You can see all of the old houses behind me. They're going to redevelop the waterways, more restaurants, more lounges. In a couple of years, it will definitely be the place to come in the city. Yalla Habibi. Yalla Habibi. Yalla, yalla. This is definitely the best time to visit Basra. As of filming, they are actually hosting the Arab Gulf Cup. So it has all the nations around the area competing in a football competition. And hopefully by the time this video goes out, Iraq have won it. So right now there are people from all over the world here to visit the city and they're very proud to be showcasing it and hosting this football competition. But we've just come to the Al-Ashir, Molly? Al-Ashar. Al-Ashar Bazaar poet the largest market in all of Basra and I'm on a hunt for an Iraqi football top because hopefully I'm not too sure we might be able to catch a game this market is absolutely huge we've just walked through like all the kids toys and decorations and now we've come to clocks uh, a lot of clocks and like antique things but like Matt said we're on the hunt for a for an Iraqi football shirt Hi. Hi! We didn't even get a magnet when we were in Baghdad, so a magnet is what we need. Um, this one's cool, look! It's got Iraq, the two Baghdad. swords, and it says Iraq, Or the, the monument. We have the, is it the Al Shahid monument? We've got Samara, we've got Babylon. I like oh this God. market. We could get pretty much all of the magnets. Shukran. Thank you very much. Shukran Habibi. Habibi. Success. We have a magnet. I'll just quickly show you because I really actually like this one. I picked this one. We have the two swords monument. It's the hardest one to find. The country uh, shape. You have the flag and then of course Iraq. And how difficult Baghdad. is it to find magnets It's in been Iraq. so hard. We've literally found I think maybe five or six in Baghdad and then this shop here. Favourite colour Z? Yes, pink colour. D, this is your 50 of the day. Not yet. Not yet. We come to the market and you look for chai. Good chai? Yes, I think. It's good? It's awesome. Salam, do you have Iraq football shirt? Iraq, yeah. Iraq, Iraq. Do you have? Iraq. Iraq. Yes. Do you have? Other ones of this. Iraq? Uh, for sure. For me, big one, big one. For me. This is chaos. I'm trying to get the Iraq football top and uh, Z is trying to translate. I have no idea if we're getting one. They're showing me some, but these are like basketball tops. You look good, my friend, but no Iraq football top. Yes. Shukran, shukran. Masalama. Masalama. <laughs> this is turning into an impossible task. I can't believe that during a football competition, I can't find an Iraqi football shirt anywhere. They're saying you can buy a plain one and then they'll print a badge on, but I feel like that will just fall off in the wash. So apparently 200 meters further this way, <laughs> there is some Iraqi football shirts. You have the, this one with the gold. I think we have found one. We've come to the area with hundreds of Iraqi football tops. Lots of them are printed and other ones are 
actually stitched, so we're trying to find one that's stitched. Well, I want it black and gold, but gold. nowhere has like the official... Yeah. Or the adult yeah, size. Yeah, or the adult, it's like one that, that's this big. It'll fit Z. I think... Very nice. It's good? That what? colour's nice on you. I like, I like. Mm. How much? Price? How much? It's good, Sarah. Huh? There's some bartering going on right now. <laughs> Z, the top barterer. I'll give you 12,000. Yeah, 12,000? 12, 12, yes. Shukran. Habibi, welcome, thank welcome. you. I'm now real Iraqi welcome, man. Welcome, Habibi, welcome. You'll find you too. this one. Oh, maybe next time. Next time. No, 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 no. no, no. 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 Why next time? <laughs> oh, I want pink one. Pink? You have pink? I want a Orange, orange. I want a pink. <laughs> This is becoming a daily occurrence. <laughs> Instead of beer, I have replaced the beer with shisha. I mean, well, I blame Haytham. Haytham is a bad influence on me because always shisha, 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 all, shisha, all shisha, shisha, shisha. But I have got my Iraqi football shirt for, I think, in the end, twelve thousand dinar, which is about seven, eight dollars, which I think is really good. Z was bartering. I think they wanted twenty thousand. He's very 000. good. Got it for twelve, but we're having some shisha. Lemon, 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 nah, nah. lemon and mint. Lemon and mint, and then we're getting some lunch. Shukran, Haytham. Shukran. Now it's time to try the best restaurant in Basra, Al Hassan restaurant. We actually tried it yesterday, um, last night for dinner. So we thought we had to come back as soon as it's number one. <laughs> This place is so good that I'm getting the exact same thing as last night. To start, we have all our different dips that they eat with the spoon, which I still find strange, even after doing it a hundred times, and for the main kebab saj. So like, beef kebab in a wrap, perfect. I went for something a little bit more adventurous. I've got a rice and chicken shawarma dish, which comes with some vegetables on the side for 10,000. Slightly more expensive for the, um, slightly more expensive compared to Matt's 5,000 sad wrap. You can't beat this though. You this can't this beat was that. just the best last night. Mm. Is it worth double the price? It's very, very good. I'm not going to eat it all though, it's huge. The best food, the best restaurant in Basra, hands down. Had dinner there last night, lunch there today, and we'll probably end up having dinner there again this evening, but we've headed down to the Cornish in Basra, which actually has been redeveloped recently. It's really nice, really modern. There's so many people out from all the different countries of the Gulf for the football competition, but we need to jump on a boat, and then we'll explore this area afterwards. We're in a little bit of a rush, because it's getting dark, and we need to be on the boat before sunset. I have absolutely no idea what's going on. We've just been thrown onto some sort of local traditional boat and we are going along the shuttle Arab. Supposedly along here there are numerous abandoned palaces of Saddam Hussein and apparently a couple of yachts of his that are shipwrecked along the river in Basra. Wow, look at this. Welcome to Basra. Well, that was chaotic. It seems like everybody has got off. We now have the boat to ourselves and we are just coming up to the iconic Basra bridge. I'm still not entirely sure on what we're actually seeing. Um, I'm hoping for some abandoned palaces. Hoping for some abandoned palaces and a good sunset. Look at this, under and past the bridge we go. There's so many of these traditional boats coming out now. We're not going to get a sunset, there's absolutely no chance. But in the distance, you can see the abandoned ship-type graveyard. And in front of me, I think, two of Saddam's sunken yachts. seeing on the boat trip. This is Saddam Hussein's gate to one of his eight palaces that he had here in Basra. Uh, it's pretty impressive. 
massive, I must say, for a gate, but who needs eight palaces in one city? We're nearly at one of Saddam's palaces. You'll notice that he really liked to have an oversized driveway and you'll also notice that we're wearing a few less layers here in Basra. The further south you get, you get incredibly close to the border with Iran and Kuwait. So the weather is a lot hotter. It's almost tropical down here in Basra. Tropical Basra, Iran. Who would have thought it? This is so cool. Look at the palace behind me. Previously, when Saddam was in power, you weren't actually even allowed on the river on a boat past his palace. That is wild. And now we get to just come and drive past. They're actually just all abandoned uh, under. Just chilling out. People are just chilling out, relaxing. This is this is crazy. Welcome to Basra! Welcome to Basra! Ahlan wa sahlan bikum fi al-Basra! Habibi, shukran. Shukran, Habibi. Oh, he was the best boat driver ever. So for our little private tour for about 20, 30 minutes, it was 25,000 Iraqi dinar. As soon as you step off the boat pier, you make it to the Cornish, and the Cornish is absolutely packed. There's everything going on here. You've got like TV stations, you've got candy floss, there's like... All the football fans, you've got parade. like a little festival. Yalla, Iraq! <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hello from Basra. This is the people from Basra. There are so many fans. Can you even see me right now? It is absolute chaos down here. It's so nice though. It's so good to see how proud the people of Basra are to be hosting this competition. But once you have one photo, it ends up being about 50 photos. We must have been stood there in one spot for like 20 minutes. We're not taking pictures of me, I'm boring. All taking pictures of Molly. Today must be a very special day. We're getting very lucky. This behind me is actually Saddam's ship. It hasn't been open to the public at all, but today it's open. It's actually under the government. I think they use it for like administration or something like that, um, but we actually get to go on it. This is mad. We're on the top deck of Saddam Hussein's abandoned yacht. Words I never thought we'd say. <laughs> Wow, we've managed to wriggle our way into what would have been Saddam's living room here on the yacht and this was built in 1981 so he'd been sat here watching his TV and he'd come over here and he'd have dinner behind. He'd make phone calls? Wow. Yeah. There's his phone. You think he's... Oh, there's another room. More. There's more rooms. We're going to see more. We've literally just been given access into the bedroom and the office in here. Look at how big this is. I what a luxury what, bedroom. I wonder what Saddam got up to on that bed. Yeah, but what a place for it. Sat on the river. Wow, this is cool. So the massage chair that Saddam had still works. Oh, oh, that is good. It makes me need the toilet though. Can you just imagine he was sat here planning. Oh. Nice. I'm not so sure, that was weird. <laughs> this was the bathroom, so this is where Saddam went to the toilet yeah. and where he showered and washed his hands. Crazy. Good morning and welcome to Erbil. Johnny, Sashi. we have a local. Love, love. So much going on. We have some lovely, nice juice they call it. I love all this stuff. History, dark history. Look at this bar though, fully kitted up. Just, it just blew us away. 